The Crypt Interviews, in association with Mayo Legend Point Castle Bar. You're listening to The Crypt, and I would like to welcome writer, actor, and presenter of the UK horror scene talk show, Hanging With, Tony Sands, to the show. So thanks for joining me today, Tony. Well, thank you for inviting me on, Rita. It's very nice of you. (laughs) And taking the time to chat. (laughs) Well, we're going to talk about the paranormal horror film Echoes of the Past, which you wrote and also have a part in. But first, I want to get a bit of background about you. So when did your love of horror begin? Well, I mean, probably way back when I was a kid, actually. Um, I've, I've always been a, I've always been a fan of films and TV, always, ever, you know, way back since I can remember. So, and I always wanted to be an actor. Uh, you know, and you kind of think what you want to be, and it wasn't that I wanted to be famous or be a star. I just wanted to be an actor. I used to watch uh, the movies. I used to watch people like Lauren Hardy, and who I thought were fantastic, and yeah. even musicals like um, Donald O'Connor and Seen in the Rain, and and then you watch horror films, and you watch all of those things, and you think the way they affect you, and and the buzz you get out of it, or the excitement you get out of it, or the laugh, sort of the, the jumps. And I wanted to do that. I wanted to be able to give that to people. Um, so I think as far, as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to, I always wanted to be involved in film. And it was just a, a broad, it was a broad thing, a broad spectrum of, of everything. I mean, horror, I think the thing with horror and with science fiction as well is you can, you can tell a lot of stories with those things, you know, because I, I think as you get older, you start appreciating what they're actually saying, it's not just about the jumps. There's actually a lot, you know, sometimes there's a lot more going on there yeah, exactly. um, that the writers have put in. And I think with horror and science fiction, writers way back, they, they, they were able to sneak things in there and that showed them a lot of the films, a lot of the quality films, not the kind of, some of the dross that they, they dish out, which is quite a lot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think, no, so I think my love of it goes, goes way back. As far back as I can remember, I've loved film and I've, it, it, it's everything, comedies and horrors and actions and thrillers and everything. So it's always been your passion. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's been the, the one consistent passion in my life, actually, yeah. Well, as I said, you present Hanging With on the UK Horror Scene website. So could you tell me a bit about the show and the site itself? Right, well, I got involved in UK Horror Scene at the, probably around the middle of last year. Uh, I got chatting to Andy online, Andy Dean, who runs UK Horror Scene. And Andy just, Andy's an amazing guy. He, he basically set it up a few years ago and he runs it and he, you know, he gets, the riot, gets the rioters. And he, he's a really, really nice guy, really passionate about horror, really lovely bloke. And I got chatting to him online, started doing some reviews for the site. And um, I don't know, like, like I said, I, I always wanted to be an actor. And I guess I, I used to act when I was younger and I kind of dropped out of it and took a different path in life and then kind of started winding back to it which is probably what got me wanting to write for the, for the site as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then I, I guess I, I guess I was kind of thinking too much and I said to Andy, have, have you ever thought about doing on-camera interviews with, because I mean, we interview people on the site but usually text-based and I asked him, he'd never thought about doing it on camera. And he said he had thought about it but he'd never had the time or the tools to do it with and I know a few people like Cameron, I know Antoine Lassell who's a cameraman and Ivan Troop who had the experience of doing the sound and Sarah de Cruz, who, who does makeup, and I, I, I thought, well, let's try it. So I spoke to all of them, and I said, do you fancy getting involved? And Andy gave me a couple of contacts. Um, I, I spoke to Luke Brady, who was my first guest, who's a fantastic filmmaker, really, really gifted, um, and a lovely guy as well. And I spoke to, spoke to Luke, and I spoke to Emma Dark, who's guest number two, yeah. and they both agreed to come on. And I, to be honest, going into it, all I wanted to do was... I thought it's going to kill a few, it's going to kill a few birds with one stone. It's like one, I, I get to, to chat to really cool and interesting people, filmmakers. Yeah. Two, I'm giving them a chance to kind of promote themselves, hopefully, and, and provide a platform for them to get to give a shout out and promote their work and let everybody see who they are. Because you don't always see the writers or directors, especially with independent stuff. And and I thought so. I thought that'd be cool. And I thought also it gives it provides um, insight into people that that are interested in getting into film. Um, and it gets me to sit in front of a camera and just not be the centre of attention, but I can sit there and kind of look over occasionally and pretend like I'm the star. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, so that was part of it. I think that was the reason. I just, I, I was getting itchy feet. I think I just wanted to do something that would be cool. Yeah. And I think the best part of it, and I'm sure it, it, it's the part that you love as well, is to get to meet amazingly talented people who who might not necessarily have been heard of. And it's it's almost criminal because some of these people are absolutely amazing. Um, like, like I said, Luke, Luke Brady, he's a cracking guy. And uh, David Shordois, who you had on your show a couple of weeks yeah. ago, very talented Scott Scott Lyles, who I'm working on with with Echoes, um, and that's I mean that, that's just to name a few. There's many many many. There, there, there's so much talent out there, 
and luckily through you know shows like yours and through hanging with it the fun of it is is to sit down and you get to chat to them and find out little bits and pieces about it and then you get to stick it up and share it with people. I know, it's brilliant. And as well, like with social media now, you know, you can connect with people all over the world who have the same passion as us in the horror genre. Yeah. And it's brilliant. It is, it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, like, um, I spoke to, I did an interview with Eric Lyas, who's a composer. He did um, Emma Dark's Seize the Night and he's done uh, some stuff for Damon Rickard and he's, He's done um, Kate Shenton's Egomaniac, which just premiered at Fright Fest over the weekend, um, last weekend. Um, and he, he, um, he's in LA, and I was chatting to him. I've been chatting to him on and off before he's even come over, before he even came over to London for Fright Fest. And so, yeah, it's like you said, it, you, you can chat to everybody all over the world, and then you get to meet them. And luckily, we, we, we arranged uh, Scott Lyce arranged an interview with him actually, um, and we had a, we had to sit down and uh, chat with him. He's a lovely, really, really lovely guy. And again, very, very talented. But yeah, social media just opens opens the door all over the world. You get to meet, you chat to all sorts of people everywhere, fans and filmmakers, and yeah, it's 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 incredible. Because I know myself personally now, growing up, not many of my friends would have liked horror at all. So I got so excited when I started meeting all these people online, and do you know, even been in the horror groups, and you can do you know suggest various films to each other and chat about what you thought of them and. It's great. It's incredible. And like people are so intelligent and knowledgeable about stuff as well. Well, that's it. And then how often would you record Hanging With? Well, we started in Hanging With. We did our first Hanging With in January, at the end, middle of January, the end of January this year. And Eric was um, lucky number 13. He was our 13th Hanging With. Okay. So um, it depends how often. I mean, I like to try and do it. We, we like to try and do at least one a month. We didn't do any in August because um, preparation for Echoes of the Past has been like, that's been full on. Oh, um, so I wanted to take a break so I could concentrate on that and then like we met up with Eric just on uh, the, other, the other day so um, yeah but we've got September's going to be busy now <laughs> and then hopefully I've got a couple lined up for October you said you always wanted to be an actor so how long have you been writing screenplays I started writing I, I, when I fell out of the acting and I kind of I, like you, it's, it's something that always calls you back you know when you get passion for something it's, it's really hard it's always there within you so you yeah. can get away with this or get away with that but you kind of always get dragged into it it's always calling it as some some part of your heart or at the back of your mind um and i i, I went to i studied at the anna Shear theater school in islington in london under anna Shear, who's an amazing teacher and her partner uh charles Rowell, again an amazing amazing guy and i drifted out of it and then i, I saw charles's name um in a in an ad somewhere that he was obviously he was doing acting classes and i thought well, let's go along i haven't seen charles for years so i went back and i was chatting to him and he remembered me which was very nice and flattering <laughs> Well, it's not nice to be forgotten, <laughs> be, especially as an actor. No, you can't forget me. Do not know who I am. <laughs> um, so, um, but I got chatting to Charles, and I went to a couple of classes, and then it was actually Charles said to me, "Have you ever thought about writing?" Uh, and I hadn't really, um, but he said I should. So I thought I'd sit down and I tried to write out a couple of <laughs> typical egotistical actor. I thought let's write out a couple of one man plays that I can star in and then tour around, and everybody can come and love me. Uh, yeah. But then I wrote it, and I, I wrote them out, and then I realised that you know there's a freaking lot of lines in a one-man play and I'd have to remember all of them, exactly, which is a bit yeah. of a drag. So, so I, I thought maybe the one-man play route isn't the way to go. Maybe <laughs> I should do something else. Uh, and then I kind of, I worked, um, a friend, an old friend of mine, an old acting friend of mine, he got in touch. And funny enough, he said, are you, are you writing? And I said, well, yeah, but really kind of thinking about it. And he asked me if I'd write a feature. I'd never even attempted to write a feature. Um, he, can you write a feature? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. Feature, easy, yeah. Um, and that was a horror film. And I sat down and I surprised myself and I wrote that in about 10 days. Got back in touch with him. And that kind of batted around for a couple of years and there was funding in place and then it fell apart and it never, it never ever happened. But then I had that kind of bug and I, I just kept trying it or trying out ideas and then I'd sit down and I'd write this. And I, I mean, uh, weirdly, uh, last year, uh, a script I wrote Got went into production a, a feature with under a, a director called Mary Mullen, who's directed and produced it, and it's a romantic comedy. And naturally, you go from romantic comedy to writing a dark thriller, and from a dark thriller, you go into writing a horror movie, which is pretty much what's happened. Mm. Um, so yeah, so the bench has gone into the bench is in post production at the moment, Brilliant. and then Echoes of the Past, which we're going into, um, we're going to be shooting in the middle of September. And um, yeah, but I mean, it was always just writing, and then it, like you know, you just you write, and then you kind of put it aside and. You know, if someone, you know, someone shows it to someone else, like the, the bench ended up with Mary through an actress friend of mine, um, Moira Ryan, who, who had met Mary and she was working with Mary. And she goes, well, actually, I know a great writer. 
<laughs> Thanks very much, Moira. And I know a great writer, and she kind of put my scripts towards Mary. She liked Bench, and the Bench um, eventually got made. And Scott, who was on my show, he was on your show as well, I think, Scott, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's a lovely guy. Um, he's a great guy, yeah. And he was on the show. And I, I mean, it's, Scott and I really hit it off. We got on really, really well. Uh, and we were talking about this and talking about that. And he's, he, I talked about Echo. Well, it was, wasn't called Echoes at the time. I don't know if it was in the past. And we got chatting and he said, well, let's have a look at it. And then he sat down a couple of weeks later and, and now we're making it together. Fantastic. So, yeah. Was that a really long answer? Was that a really long-winded answer to I your like, question? I like long answers. I like long answers. <laughs> As I always say, the interview is about you, not me, so the longer your answer is, the better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to being on the other side. Yeah. It's so much better being on your side of it. No, I don't, well, I know what you mean. I, I hate being the other side myself. Um, well, then, what's the storyline of Echoes? Um, well, Echoes of the Past, it's basically about um, a group of investigators who are going, who go into a haunted house, preparing for a night there and it's all about what happens in the lead up to their investigation oh very different so yeah it's, yeah, right. it's i mean it's very much a character-based piece and it's a very personal story to me i won't go into the story behind it but it's a very very personal story to me it, it comes from yeah, quite a dark place right. it's just my my way of dealing with a situation was like not to talk this was me talking yeah, about something that kind of got to me um and like luckily scott liked it um and he was really interested and I was really chuffed because Scott's a very talented director and it's the first script um, that he's the first film that he's making that he hasn't scripted himself so that's very flattering um, exactly. and then we got a really really good cast on board as well Mac McFadden who's a really lovely guy he's a, a soldier as well as being a, um, a comic poet and a good actor and then we've got Sophie who worked with Scott on a couple of his previous films and we've got Paul Dudney who's a very talented actor as well so we've got a great cast We've got an amazing location. I mean, the, the, the location, I, we won't have to act scared in this location. It's a proper haunted house. Brilliant. It's a real, it's a real proper haunted house. It's, it's like from the 1500s. Uh, a woman died in there. She hung herself in, the, in, in one of the rooms we're going to be shooting in. So it's, it's, not going to take, it's not going to take a lot of acting to act scared. It, oh, no. it, I, I think we're all going to be proper terrified in there. Well, that's exactly. I've been on a few paranormal investigations for the show here. And by God... Yeah. The atmosphere and everything just, as I say, nothing would even have to happen because your mind goes into overdrive <laughs> itself. <laughs> yeah, and we're shooting at night as well. It's going to be a night. It's going to be night shoots, so um, yeah, it's going, it's going to be pretty terrifying. <laughs> I've had one visit to the location, and, and that was in the daytime, and that was that was spooky in the daytime. Very convincing performances, so. <laughs> I said they're going to be Oscar-winning performances, I think. They're going to be Oscar-worthy. <laughs> well, can you tell me a bit about the character you're playing in it? Um, I'm playing a guy called Frank. There's there's two guys who are tech, technicians, Frank and Fred, and they base, they're, they're, they're more the kind of comic relief without being overly comic. Cool. We had to take a few of the lines out. Scott thought I was being a bit too comic. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, they, they're basically not the, not the smartest of people they, they mean they mean well they're well intent they're, they're the good in, good intentions they're a little bit dopey but they're nice fellas and they're basically i mean i, I think when i wrote it I, I i feel like when you've got something dark you kind of need a little bit of light as well yeah and i agree i think that was my thinking process usually when i write because because my background is in improvisation i think usually when i write it it's i'm improvising as i write anyway i don't necessarily have an end game in my mind i don't really have an ending in mind i might have something vague there and i might work towards that i might have characters in mind or certain actors in mind when i'm writing like paul i wrote the, the lead character one of the lead characters of the professor for paul, with paul in mind i wrote max character with mac in mind um I, I didn't have an actress in mind when i wrote it but i knew yeah. what i wanted i knew what kind of female or female role i wanted in there and you kind of um, go where it takes you kind of thing Sorry, you'd kind of go where the story takes you. Yeah, and it just kind of it just kind of grows. And so, like, I know I knew what kind of characters I wanted with mine and Max, but I didn't necessarily know what they were going to grow into. I didn't know what they were going to talk about. So, I mean, I'm literally writing along, and then they'll come out of a line, and I'm thinking, oh, that's quite good. <laughs> and I realise, oh yeah, that's me. I wrote that, and okay, so I don't really know where that's coming from. I don't know why I said that. And maybe you might, I might start back writing then to put stuff in that I've thought of later on in the script. Yeah. But Echoes, Echoes I wrote in about, the, the first draft I wrote in about a day. Um, and we've, since Scott's come on board, we've had to redraft it, obviously, for, for to suit the location, to suit, you know, suit time as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's something I'm very happy with. So hopefully when people watch it, they, they get a lot out of it as well. Well, I think it'll really work having the comic relief there because... 
if you look at Insidious, the two guys in that, the two paranormal investigators in that were a bit dopey and it was so funny, but at the same time, it didn't take away from the scariness of the movie. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, what, what, where these two guys came from, I wrote, um, I've written this, another script, which we we had a bit of a problem with, with filming. We, we filmed it last year and it hasn't quite worked out, so I want to go back to that. Um, but I'd, I'd written that and it, that's a dark, that's a dark thriller comedy type thing. And my approach to that was, uh, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm a big fan of Laurel and Hardy. I love Laurel and Hardy. So what my thinking with that was, if Laurel and Hardy were around today and their comedy careers had kind of, the, the box office, the comedies weren't working at the box office anymore. And what they did was like a lot of comics, they moved into straight acting. They made, went into more of a straight role. So I thought, well, what would Laurel and Hardy end up with mm-hmm. if they went into a straight role? If they went into a straight movie, a, a, a mainstream movie that wasn't a comedy, but it was a dark thriller, you know, when they kind of, like Steve Martin did, Robin Williams did. Yeah. Um, so I thought, what would they do? So I wrote um, a thriller with Laurel and Hardy in straight roles. And um, I worked with Mac on that, and, and I really enjoyed working with Mac. And I thought, well, actually, let's kind of take them. So I've kind of took those two parts, and I've kind of put them in echoes. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my thinking. So it's not full on Laurel and Hardy, but it's kind of with Laurel and Hardy were in straight roles. This is the kind of role they'd be in. This yeah. is what they turn up in. Well, then, <laughs> so it makes it sound like a comedy, and it's not. It's not a comedy, but that's, that's, that was no, my thing with these I characters. Get what you're <laughs> well, <laughs> the movie's in pre production now, and it was funded by your hugely successful Indiegogo campaign. So, what do you think made your campaign succeed where so many others fail? Oh, I'm going to, you know what, I'll give, I'll, I've got to give uh, huge props to Scott Lyas here. Scott, Scott Lyas, um, as, you, as you said, he's a, he's a really, really lovely guy and he's a very, very talented guy and he's very passionate and he worked, he worked so hard. I mean, both of us worked really, really, really hard and we had um, Andy Dean at UK Horror Scene pumping it out and Chris Niles at London Horror Society pumping it out. We had a lot, we, we gained a lot of support, um, but it's, and this is to anyone that, that's going out, you have to give it 200% of your work effort. You've got to go full on. You've got to spend time on social media. You've got to chat to people. You've got to get out there. And, and you've got to be honest. I mean, it, you know, you've got to be honest with, with what you're selling as well. You've got to have faith in your product. It, it, it was, I mean, I, I've been, I took time off um, out of work for the, for the past six weeks because I wanted to put, I wanted to have the time yeah. to invest in, into Echoes and it, I've, I've just been full on. It, it's not stopped. I mean, I've, I've not been going to a day job and I've just been, this has become my day job. It's just been absolutely full on work. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. And I mean, I, I'll tell you how, how hard it is. Scott and I will be swapping texts, text messages at three o'clock in the morning sometimes oh my God. because it, cause that's your brain can't switch off. You're doing this, you're doing that. You're, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to sort out lo- uh, uh, accommodation at the location. You're trying to sort out um, food for the cast and crew you're sorting out um, insurance you're sorting out everything you're trying to sort out but i mean yeah, even even when you're going through the campaign you're already thinking you know you're already thinking about where you're going to spend that money how you know if we get the two thousand pounds we went for two thousand five hundred originally how are we going to get away with that how are we going to spend that um but i mean you've got but with i mean and with the campaign itself you've just got to be out there you've got to be constantly 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 and you feel terrible you feel really really bad because you feel like people are going to get really pissed off with me my name's just going to be constantly <laughs> popping up in their timeline they're gonna they're gonna hate me they're not going to give me money just to spite me but um you, you, you've got to engage with people you just got to go full on and it, it was a lot it was a lot of work and i'll give I've got to give huge props to Scott because Scott led the way there. He, he'd done a campaign before. It hadn't been um, as successful as he'd liked. He got a little bit of money, but not his target. Um, so he'd learned, he'd learned lessons from that. Well, that's and, it, yeah. and, and, and he's a very honest guy. Uh, he's not, he's not, full, he's not pretentious. He's not, he doesn't put on a mask. Scott is as you find him. Yeah. And, and I think people appreciate that. And I'm not, I'm not very good at putting on a front. I'm pretty much as you, t- as you find me, uh, but it was it was just a lot of hard work. That's how we got the money. It was a lot, a lot of hard work. We had a lot of faith in the product. I, I mean, like Scott had faith in the script. I have faith in Scott. And we have faith in the people that are involved with it. So we've been really, really fortunate. We've been really lucky. I mean, you don't take it for granted because there's some a lot of great projects out there that don't don't hit their targets and don't get anywhere close to the funding they deserve. Well, exactly, um, because yeah. like I've seen people, Johnny, who are stars from major horror movies from the 80s and 90s, and they've put up 
crowdfunding campaigns to make movies and they haven't reached their target. So fair play, Chi. It goes to show all you put into it. When you you yeah. got your target and then you got the stretch target as well, which was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, we got we we, we did really really well. We we went over our stretch target in the end. We got um we we were very very lucky and I mean we were trending ahead of a Danny Trejo movie actually. You were saying about hitting their targets at one point on Indiegogo. We were trend we were we were number one and we were trending ahead of uh, Danny Trejo, which we were really pleased about. Oh that my was god, that's <laughs> we amazing. Really yeah, we were we were really really chuffed. I mean, like you, you take the thing is you put all that work in, so you've got to you've got to get as much joy out of it as you can. So well, like, that's it. And sure, yeah. the whole experience now of making it is going to be so much fun as well. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it, I think it will be. I, we, Scott's put together a good crew. We've got a good cast. We've got an amazing location. It's it's going to be tiring and it's going to be full on. I mean, it, you know, because obviously with indie filmmaking, you've only got so many days to shoot. You can't. You can't be extravagant and shoot yeah. it over. When we're shooting over a weekend, you haven't got the time um, or the resources to to for all the, you know to to be so lucky with the time. You know you haven't got a big time frame. You've got to squeeze everything into a short time. Exactly. Um, but I think I think I think it'll be a good shoot. I'm I'm looking forward to it. But now again, it's the brain buzzing away. You know I want to get the shoot out of the way so we can get into post production and start working on that. Oh, we've already started. I mean I've already started working on what we're going to do doing post production. I'm chatting to all sorts of people and. Uh, what we're going to where we're going to go and what we're going to do with it and how we're going to market it, it it's it's non-stop well, you'll, definitely, it's non-stop. you'll definitely have to send me a screener when it's completed I'm we will do Rita it. don't worry I am dying to see it so kind of when have you a month in your head when you hope to have this out uh, I think Scott would like to have a trailer at least by the end of October um, but I think once we get once we get it done I think then it will be a matter of sitting down and deciding uh, what we do but I think we'd like to put it into a couple of we've had interest from a couple of festivals already um, so we, we, we you know maybe aiming at a couple of festivals see what we do with it but I think it just get the film together and that would be the luxury then having it done and it's like take a breath and then you know take a breath for 30 seconds and then yeah. and away who, go are gonna, who are we going to who are we going to target who are we going to what festivals are we going to get it off to and uh, then it's all it's work all over again isn't it it, it doesn't stop it's and I tell you, independent filmmaking it's it's hard work <laughs> And come here till I ask you, did you go to Fright Fest yourself? I didn't get, um, I, I was on the fringes of Fright Fest. I didn't actually go to it. I wanted to go and a couple of things came up. Was, it turned out to be a really super busy weekend. Yeah. Um, but I went down on the Monday and I, I met Eric Elick and Scott from, they, they came out and, I'm, and Chris Niles, I bumped it, I, I chatted to Chris Niles for a bit. Um, but yeah, so I, I didn't actually get to the screens myself, but I heard lots of good, I mean, obviously you're going to be very hit and miss when you've got so many films playing. Heard lots of good things. I mean, there was lots of good things said about um, Kate Shenton's Egomaniac, uh, Damon Ricard's um, Disassociative, uh, just an empty. Uh, you know, they, they were knackered, though. When I saw Scott and Eric, they were shattered because they'd done, they'd done the full weekend, the full five days. They were absolutely whacked out. I'm a massive fan of Damon. Oh, my God, I loved his shorts. They were fantastic. Yeah, and he's a lovely bloke as well, Damon. Yeah. Good guy. But really I, nice fella. I was laughing at all these people putting up pictures of Fry Fest and it was like a, a back catalogue of all my interviews for the last yeah. while. Everybody was meeting up together at, at the festival. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. Cool. But it's great. Yeah, it must be quite every- nice. Yeah, you can put them all up around your walls and say, yeah, tick, tick, tick. Yeah, got them, got them, done them. Um, so then where can people follow the project online? We've, our Indiegogo page is still up there. Uh, so you can look that Echoes of the Past it, if you go onto Twitter you can get Echoes of the Past we're, we're on Twitter uh, you can go through uh, either my my Twitter or Scott's um, Crossroad Pictures or Scott Lias uh, but I mean the links the links are everywhere we're, we're, we, we hit the internet really hard it's everywhere we, hopefully we're everywhere if you Google us it comes up Google Echoes of the Past and there we are and just to uh, say as well it's Echoes of the Past as in P-A-S-S-E-D not that's right. P-A-S-T. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah. Echoes of the past. It's cool, cool name. Yeah. yeah, no, we were quite, again, we were quite pleased when we came up with that one. That was a moment of little sort of clap, clapping our hands and dancing around <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it was between the two of us. Um, I think we were trying to come up with a good title because the original title was, I think it was just a generic, it was The Haunted or The Hauntings. I think it was The Haunted. Which is like everybody, there's how many, yeah. how many films are called The Haunted? So we knew we had to change the title. And um, Scott texted me. Uh, Scott texted me saying, "What about Echoes of the Past? You know, the P A S T." And I'm like, "Well, actually, that's quite good. All right, that's good." And then the following morning, I woke up the next morning 
And I'm like, oh, I know. And I texted Scott saying, what about Echoes of the Past? And yeah, that was it. That was the moment. So I think we were both really, really pleased Excellent. with ourselves. So you both, you both had a, an input into that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I mean that, the, the nice thing is with, and someone actually asked me, do you not, do you not find it hard um, putting your hands into the hand, you know, putting your scripts into the hands of someone else, especially someone that you're friends with or that you get on with, that you're not, you're not worried that you'll be arguing or, or, or fall out of each other. And the nice thing is that um, I don't feel that, and there's been no, there's been no conflict at all in the whole process. You know, whenever Scott's had an input on the script, it's always been valid. He's always had a valid reason for taking a line out, or he's always had a valid reason for yeah. saying, "Can we do this? Or can we do that?" And and we can be very open with each other and talk to each other. So yeah, it's it's been a really really nice process, and like so, but it's been a very collaborative process going down. You know, starting even with the title, where we both came up with it together, and it, you know everything else has been yeah. it's been it's been a fantastic You're on the same experience wavelength. so far. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just it's the trust thing, isn't it? If you're going to be work, and it's like you know you, you're not working at a level where you're getting paid. You're not making any money out of it. You're not going to make any money out of it. It's, if anything, it's going to be it's going to cost you. Luckily, we got a good bit of money. Um, we got a good deal of money out of Indiegogo, which has all been spent on the film. It's all been spent on production, but it, it's, but you want to work because you're not making any money. You want to be working with people that you like, and you want to be working with yeah. people that you can learn from as well. And and the thing that um, is nice with Echoes is that I'm working with people that I'm getting I'm I'm getting knowledge from. Hopefully, they're getting some knowledge from me, not just me waffling away a lot of the time. But um, it, it's just been fun, and I like them. It's I really like Scott. He's a really nice guy, and he's a very talented guy. And um, the team, the team as well, Paul, Paul Dooney, Sophie, uh, Mac, great, great people. And yeah, so it'd be, it's a nice experience, it's something to look forward yeah. to because it's going to be a nice experience. But like I said, you've got, if you're going to be working at this level, find people you want to work with. But well, that's it, and sure, you're spending so much time together as opposed to become like a family. Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like um, it happened with hanging with when when, when I started doing the hanging with, I got in. I thought, who do I, who, do I, who can I use? Who can I use? Who's got the tools that I need? And then who do I want to work with? And we we all get we got a nice little bunch there. We got a nice group there that, that we work with, and it shows when people come down to to be interviewed or to, to chat to hang with us. Um, it, I think it shows because it, it's quite a happy little bunch. Everybody knows yeah. their roles. Everybody knows what they need to do. They're enjoyable interviews. People should definitely go on to the UK Horror Scene website and check them out. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I enjoy doing them. So after Echoes, have you anything planned for after that or have you looked that far ahead? Uh, well, <laughs> hmm. we there, I, I think there's a couple of projects that Scott and I have talked about doing in the future. Scott's got a, another project coming up, I think, after Echoes. He's working on a feature. There's a couple of things we talked about that we'd like to work on together. I'm working on a another show with Chris Niles of London Horror Society, um, which um, UK Horror Scene will be involved with as well. And Kate Danbury is an actress who is in Mindless with Nicholas Vince, which was a, a Katie Bonham film, Katie a short film, Bray, which is a great yeah. film. I don't know if you've seen that Mindless good film. I did, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's very that's great. Well, Kate Danbury's in that, and we're, basically we're doing a quiz show. We're going to do a horror quiz. Um, which is at the moment untitled. We haven't come up with a title that we can all agree on yet. Uh, but yeah, Chris Niles and I are, are, are heading that up. Uh, Chris is going to be a captain. Kate's going to be a captain, and I'm going to be the the host and question master. We're shooting that in the middle of September as well. So the week after I do Echoes, as if I didn't have enough to do, oh, the week okay. after we shoot Echoes, the following weekend uh, on a Saturday, we've got um, we're doing the first quiz show, which we're doing at a theatre. We're, we're going to do it live in front of an audience. Hopefully, oh, an audience brilliant. will turn up. And then we're going to record that and we're going to put that up on the internet as well. And that, that's going to be our pilot. And then we want to do that as a series of shows. Um, so that'll be an ongoing thing. That's a great idea. Yeah, so that, that's something that I'm excited about. Uh, got the right questions for that. Be right. <laughs> every, now, every spare moment when I'm not thinking about echoes, I'm thinking, oh, that's a good you won't question. Sleep. I'll put that in the quiz. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's, that, so that'll be fun. And Chris Chris Niles is a great guy. Kate, Kate Danbury is a lovely girl. She's a, she's she's. She's a good actress as well, actually, but she's she's got good energy. She's a big, big horror fan as well. She's very passionate about horror. And she's running um, the London Ho- London Horror Festival, which is a festival of plays in October. Um, in, in Well, yeah, October 2016. So she, she's overseeing that. Um, so, yeah, everybody's busy. Everybody's busy. It's all go, go, go. Everybody, everybody involved in the quiz is busy. Yeah. Keeps us keeps us on our toes, that way. Yeah. Keeps you out of trouble. Yeah, well, I don't know about out of trouble. It keeps us on our toes. <laughs> well, listen, Tony, thank you so much for your time today. And make sure as soon as that is ready, you send me a screener because I'm dying to see it. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much for taking in, an interest, Rita, as well. And I love your show. It's it's, it's really oh, great that... Um, thank you so much. 
people are doing nice stuff and fun stuff. It's it's great, and That's then promoting it. promoting the projects. It's Power all great. Power is taking over. <laughs> um, and thanks very much for taking your time to chat to me. I appreciate that. The Crypt interviews in association with Mayo Legend Point Castle Bar.